Good evening, everyone. TSV Television proudly welcomes you to WFA Football. It's the last game of the season for these teams you'll see tonight as they fight for a division crown and playoff berth. It's the Wisconsin Wolves and the Minnesota Machine coming up next. Hello, everyone. I'm Mike Peden. Thank you for tuning in for the conclusion of the 2011 WFA regular season. Jeff Williams will join me shortly in the broadcast booth. Big playoff implications are at stake between the two teams, but the tiebreaker, not as simple as you might expect in the WFA. The divisional record is the first tiebreaker when it comes to a playoff spot, and right now Minnesota holds the edge with a 3-0 record, while Wisconsin has a 2-1 record, even though the two teams have identical regular season records. For Wisconsin to secure a playoff spot, they not only have to win, but beat Minnesota by 22 points or more, but with Wisconsin losing 27-6 in the first game of the season at Wasau, that's a tall order. But they have some weapons on their running back arsenal and on offense, and that includes Aubrey Wesley, who averages 9.2 yards a carry. She has 10 touchdowns on the year. Christy Miller, also a dangerous passer when they decide to pass. Four touchdowns, only one interception, 25 of 67 on the season. Minnesota having to make a few more changes to their roster. Lisa Olson, the team's owner, retired last week. Too much stress with all her other duties, so she will not be on the defensive line. Make Yelp will also not suit up tonight for the machine. She tore her meniscus in the loss to Iowa last week. Minnesota got beat in the air by Iowa, and they'll be looking to contain the pass defense. That does it from here. We'll take you to the field shortly and start this playoff fight. Can you guys introduce yourselves, please? Christy. Christy. What's up, Christy? Have a nice night for football. Hopefully that's severe weather. We'll stay away oh. from us and we'll be good to go. So um great you're the visiting team who's gonna be the spokesperson. Right at number three, I got a fifty seven piece here, ladies have a head. And the tail, what's your call? Head. Heads is called. Call. It is a head? Like, like, to receive. like the ball, and which goal would you like to defend? Uh, we'd like to defend that one. Okay, back to your goals, please. Three over here. Like goals won the toss. Receiving out here. Both teams, you guys ready to go? Okay, we'll yes. get that clock reset for 15. We'll have it to go, uh, get it going, all right? Let's have a good game. Sure. Good and we welcome you to Einer Anderson Stadium. Once more, as the Minnesota Machine wrap up their 2011 campaign today, they hope it doesn't end Altogether, if they win or if they lose by less than 21 points, they will win the Upper Midwest Division Championship and take home a playoff berth where they will have a date with the Kansas City Tribe. Wisconsin, as we mentioned, lost the first meeting of the season, 27-6. to Wisconsin, a new WFA team this year. Minnesota will kick off to start the first quarter. They are wearing their home orange, of course. Wisconsin wearing their silver and black uniforms. Danielle Thompson with the honors. She missed a 40-yard field goal attempt that would have tied the game last week against Iowa. But she's put that behind her, and it's an onside kick. Minnesota touched it, but Wisconsin comes up with the recovery. It was that kind of play calling last week that highlighted Willie Howard's aggressive style on kickoffs. But Wisconsin will get the first possession. Here's a look at their offense. Christy Miller will start at quarterback. And they don't have any wide receivers. Their running backs are Terry Edelbeck, Tiffany Adrians, and Aubrey Wesley. They run a double wing formation. Karee Massa, Melissa Kola for the tight ends. Elena Littlewolf, Peggy Johnson, Maria Dirth, Stephanie Nelson, and Lisa Hawkschild are your offensive line for the Wolves. And my partner Jeff Williams now joining me in the booth. It is first and ten for Wisconsin. Mike, good to be back with you again. Well, we were just, uh, I think, it, was, it seemed like yesterday when we last met. And to find out it was seven days ago. <laughs> well, literally it was yesterday well, yeah, if you literally. count the Lynx game. You count the Minnesota Lynx game, I think we were together, what, 18 hours ago. <laughs> first and ten, we'll get a look at Christy Miller and the Wisconsin offense. As we mentioned, they are highlighted by their running back, Aubrey Wesley. We've been fighting a rain all day, but it's cleared up now, and there's our first look. It's number 83, Terry Edelbeck, and she moves the ball to the 44-yard line for a gain of about four yards. Minnesota's defense, they run a 43. 
it's Nell Gelhaus and Jessica Patnode. Charlie Williamson and Nina Cocharella at the defensive line. Linebackers are Mary Walworth, Sarah Bishop, Swan McLeod, and Kendra Kilpatrick Searcy. Your secondary, Don Schmidt, Daniel Thompson, and Abigail Smith. So, Mike, what does Wisconsin? Need, what, what does Minnesota need to do to stop Wisconsin on this drive? Well, they need to get uh, three and out, most likely here, but it will likely be the running game. And there's some pressure inside with the pitch or the carry to Tiffany Adrians, and she runs almost out of bounds, gets to the 41-yard line. For Minnesota, the big thing they'll be looking for is the pass defense. That's where they got beat last week against Iowa, and that included a 30-yard touchdown pass with 50 seconds to go. But again, in the WFA, most teams are run-oriented, so stopping the run is, of course, the first step but Minnesota has to keep their secondary on alert. It's third and four at the 41. And did Minnesota force a false start? It looks so, yes, and the official signals, yes. False start, it's coming back. Well, the play was whistled dead. <laughs> it doesn't come back. Well, it's coming back 10 more yards. Well, five. Line, or five. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long weekend. It has been. Third and... Eight. And it's a little humid in the uh, press box today. A little humid everywhere you go, but Wisconsin, they brought a pretty good crowd for their road game. I see a few signs out there. Well, they know this is their, potentially their last game of the season. They have to win by 21 or more, the overall record irrelevant. And the Minnesota crowd and the Wisconsin crowd rival each other in size. So this is already a rivalry. Sounds like another border rivalry that we're used to seeing up here. It's a play action pass, and... Incomplete, No broken. flags. No flags. Tiffany Adrians, the intended receiver, but triple coverage by the machine secondary. Broken up by Don Schmidt. Just too much. There was some contact, but the referees ruled it incidental. Third and eight. Well, Ball fourth and eight now. Fourth and eight. So our first fourth down play of the game. And for those who watched last week's broadcast, and it's a habit that I've gotten into, is I look at the scoreboard and they say third and eight. Mike looks at the flag, or the, the marker on the field, and it's fourth and eight. Wisconsin punts. Smith to return. She had a touchdown call back last week with an illegal block. In fact, that's happened twice this season. No touchdown, but Minnesota will start their offense at the 39-yard line. And speaking of their offense, Mandy Merriman starting at quarterback for the machine. Hannah Cheese and Lexi Tolley will get the start at the running back slots. Katie Flynn, Becky Bauman, and Jesse Boyles will have your complete your receiver slots. Your linemen, Heather Richardson, or Heather Baker, left tackle, Brett Campos, left guard, Angela Allman, the center, Leela Willard, the right guard, and Susan Brooks, the right tackle. And Mike, on that last play, it was Melissa Koloff from Wisconsin with the tackle. First and 10, we'll have the Wisconsin defense for you shortly. Hannah Cheese with the first carry of the game. She had a big game last week against Iowa, but she stopped for a minimal game. W gain of one. Wisconsin's defense, defensive line, Leela Big John and Elizabeth Wilcox are your ends. Elena Littlewolf and Jessica Kidrowski are your tackles. They run a 44 stack, so your linebackers are Christine Gilson, Carrie Massa, Nicole Schroeder, and Melissa Koloff. Your secondary is Aubrey Wesley, Tiffany Adrians, and Terry Edelbeck, so the running back tandem for the Wolves. Also their secondary. And it's second and nine. They try again to cheese. Cheese will get a few more yards this time as she's tackled at the 45-yard line. And let's take a look at the coaching staff. We'll start with Minnesota. Willie Howard, the head coach. Michael Vinson, assistant head coach. Howard and Vinson, the coordinators as well. Doug Johnson, offensive line coach. Kim Miller, quarterbacks coach. Dante Williams, receiver coach. Terrell Preston, offensive assistant. Robert Parker, assistant defensive coordinator. Darren Olson, defensive line coach. Derek Sims, defensive line coach. Maurice Jones, linebacker coach, Rich Gray, defensive backs coach, and Ayakovos Hukalas, defensive assistant. And Mike, on that last play, you have to give a lot of credit to Terry Edelbeck for Wisconsin. She uh, broke into the backfield, almost nailed the quarterback for loss. And Wisconsin will force a three and out, perhaps. There's Hannah Cheese on the tackle, who has a slight limp when she gets up. 
Wisconsin's coaching staff, Mark Dirth, the head coach, Brian Johnson, offensive line coach, Randall Connors, offensive coordinator, Rich Ermsher, special teams coach, Brad Peterson, defensive line coach, Shane Cornier, defensive coordinator, Gurley, defensive backs coach, Ron Nelson, receiver coach, Antoine Lovely, running back coach, Matthew Razek, special teams coach, Minnesota going for it at fourth and one. I formation, quarterback keeper. More than enough. Maddie Merriman, she did that a couple times, including that last touchdown by Minnesota. Drove the defense away by sending out the wideouts. And that's a Minnesota first down with 10 minutes and 28 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Minnesota converts on fourth down. And once again, Minnesota seems to run the same script as last year. They battled through injuries all season. They're in position to win a division title and playoff spot. And we'll get to the other similarity in a moment. They go to Lexi Tolley at the fullback position and Tolley pushes her way to the 46, a gain of four yards. Now last week, Maggie Alt had an injury. I had misidentified that as Goodman, but Mike, you were correct in <laughs> noting that it was Maggie Alt. But I noticed that she's not out there today. Do you have an up update on her status? Torn meniscus Ooh. at the last game against Iowa. No, she will not be suiting up for this game and perhaps the next game against the Tribe should the machine clinch a playoff spot. One of the many injuries the machine have battled this season, Nicole Feets was the starting quarterback to begin the year and she suffered an ACL tear on a two game road trip. And we have a false start, start penalty. Jesse Boyles moved. And Lisa Olson, who's taking over for public address duties today, spotted that as well. Now the other similarity I was going to point out the weather last year at the final game of the season, well, the final home game, we dealt with rain. It was against the old Iowa Thunder, and it happened to clear out just as the game started. Right and that now, was right here at Einer Anderson Stadium. Well, that was a playoff game. No, that was the playoff game. Well, that was yeah, the, that it was Iowa. It was Iowa at Griffin, Griffin Stadium. Griffin Stadium at St. Paul Central's facility. Second and eleven after the false start penalty. Minnesota continuing the I formation. Cheese looking to go right, finds a hole. Gains about five, or three yard gain, I should say. It will be third and about eight. Now in your mind, what does Minnesota look for? Obviously they want a playoff spot, but this is the last game of the year. What do you think they want to send to their fans? Well, what they want to send to their fans is one, a victory. Just to win at home is always a gratifying thing. Two, just to know that they'll be in the playoffs. They made the playoffs last year. I think this team is looking at going deeper in the playoffs. I know Willie Howard has primed his team all year long to get not just in, but deep. Merriman is, is sacked. Oh, That's ruled incomplete. <laughs> so it's an incomplete pass and not a sack, but still great penetration by the Wolves. And I think that was Edelman back in there on, uh, on that drive. This time, Minnesota sends out the punting unit. And Danielle Thompson, who we mentioned, missed a 40-yard field goal that would have been a career high against Iowa. But for Willie Howard and the team, you saw it, and they saw it as a sign of confidence in Danielle Thompson's kicking ability. Well, Willie Howard said we could either go for a, a long pass and hope that it lands in one of the machine player's hands, or you can try a field goal and at least get, try to get the tie. And we had a great punt by Thompson as she gets it all the way to the 18 yard line. So Wisconsin will have deep field position. Wisconsin deep in their own territory to start this next possession. Now we mentioned the Wolves lost 27 to six in the first meeting between these two teams on their home turf. This is their first year in the WFA. Then you describe the acclimation process, if you can. <laughs> well, I think anytime you're dealing with different opponents, you're dealing with a restructure with, uh, with the divisions, it, it's always an adjustment to make in order to get your system and your pattern down. I think more importantly for the Minnesota Machine Squad, is to is the fact that Willie Howard has the reins. It's not an interim situation like the playoff game last year. He has the reins. This team was meeting in the offseason and they were they were already trying to gel early 
for, for this team, they're trying to peak at the right time. As far as Wisconsin, they're coming in and they're doing really an admirable job in getting this far this quick. Second and 10, Wisconsin sending receivers to the left. Again, they run a tight end wing and the pass is incomplete. Aubrey Wesley, the intended receiver. Wesley averaging 9.2 yards a carry on the run and in the air, she has 15 catches for 274 yards, three touchdowns, so Wesley quite we versatile. Wesley is their go-to person. That's much like Jennifer Bowling for the Iowa Explosion. Bowling is the heart and soul of that Iowa team. And I think that Aub uh, Aubrey Wesley is the same for this Wisconsin team. We'll see how she and the rest of the offense can respond to a third down and nine. And Minnesota jumped the neutral zone but got back in time, so no offsides penalty. And it's Wesley with the carry, but she will not be close to a first down. And I imagine Wisconsin will punt here. Now there are two Wisconsin teams, the other team, the Dragons. They came here for the machine home opener. And Minnesota took care of them quite nicely as well. So Minnesota has yet to lose to a Wisconsin team. That's not something you'll see at the NFL rivalry. But Mike, Wisconsin Wolves took on the Wisconsin Dragons last week and demolished them 66 to nothing. So I think a lot of that has to deal with the fact that the Wisconsin Dragons are just flat out not good this year. That's not to say that the Wisconsin Dragons can't rebuild for next season and get into the right position where they're competitive in a year or two as we see a punt that goes to Smith. Smith with room, pass space on the right side. This will be a good return. Still on her feet and taken out of bounds at the 15. This one will stand, so no touchdown yet for Smith, who can break out at any point, but two great returns great job, ladies. on her end. Now getting back to the Wisconsin Dragons, that team has the beginning basis of something that's great. They, they really do. It's just going to take them a season or two, kind of like the Nebraska Stampede. It's taken them, this is now the Stampede's second season, and they're starting to show that they're not the team that they were last year. I think the Dragons, they're gonna be you know, a team that's very much like the Stampede. In the meantime, we've got this Wisconsin Wolves team out here, and they're already impressive but they are facing a red zone attack by the machine, but a bad snap and Merriman has to fall on it and that's a smart thing to do, just fall on the ball, go for another day, but she got a bit of a push from the machine defender and Merriman, she may have taken an awkward fall and they have to take an injury timeout. That's your starting quarterback. And that was Elizabeth Wilcox with that push. The field is wet. It's been raining all day in the metro area. We have a stalled front, and so conditions are a bit slick. And you hear the Minnesota assistant coaching staff yelling about a, not having a penalty on there for an unimpeded to the quarterback push. As Merriman I, fell, her knee was down, and officials, I think, had blown the play dead, and there was the push, so that was a tough call to make. I think what's more, more important right now is the health of Merriman. And if Merriman is unable to play, she'll have to sit out this play, of course. Their backup is Daniel Thompson. Who's warming up on the sidelines as we speak. And Thompson, as we've talked about in the first year or two, took on a lot of roles on offense for the machine. Well, Thompson took on, this, uh, on the roles like Aubrey Wesley's taking on the roles for the Wisconsin Wolves, like Jennifer Bowling takes on the responsibilities and the roles for the Iowa Explosion. Thompson was the heart and soul of this team its first two seasons. She was a running back. As we can see, she can play quarterback. She's the team's kicker. She was also playing on defense. One of the things for Thompson coming into this season was to limit what she does on the field pretty much playing defense and kicker. And that's been a role that's been more suited for her this season than, than the previous ones. But now the question is, how is she going to adjust if she has to come in as quarterback? As it looks like Mary Mann being helped up to her feet. Coach Willie Howard assisting her. And she is literally being carried off of the field as we speak. So it looks like we've probably got another knee injury. Another serious knee injury at that. 
we may not see here for the rest of this game, but we'll get an update for you as best we can and provide it to you if we can get one. But Daniel Thompson, like you mentioned, their goal was to limit her role, but sometimes things don't play out that way, and so now Thompson has to step up in multiple roles. But one thing you have to give credit to Thompson for is the fact that she can take on multiple roles and do them well. So it's not where, oh, because we have somebody in a quarterback here that you can un underestimate her, or that, oh, well, geez, now we've got a big hole at, at the safety position. Tully with the carry as they push forward. And Tully gets it to the 19. Not close to the line of scrimmage, still three yards behind that, so it will be third and 13. And we should point out, Thompson came up with an interception last week against the Iowa Explosion on defense. Yes, so. she did. The versatility is there, but I think the concern, well, hopefully it doesn't play out that way. The Minnesota doesn't have anyone behind Thompson on the depth chart, so if something happens, they'll have to go to an emergency quarterback. But I think that's what every team ever faces. Third and 12 is the official ruling. Thompson going to Cheese. And Cheese to the 15. And Thompson was taken down by Terry Edelbeck. The Minnesota offensive line have not been able to contain her this far with just under five minutes left in the first quarter. But if you want to protect your quarterback, your left offensive tackle and left offensive um, guard have to definitely step up and contain Adelbeck. Big decision here on fourth and 10. You're at the 15, you're in Thompson's range, but it appears Minnesota will go for it on fourth down. If the offensive line holds, the machine might be able to pick up a first down. They can get to the five without scoring and pick up a first. They're gonna try with Cheese, who cuts left, close, but not enough. She stopped at the nine. Six yard gain, but Wisconsin will take over on downs, now although that, they will start deep in their own territory again. That, that was an interesting call with a scoreless game. It's still early in the game, but you're deep in your opponent's territory. If I were Willie Howard, I would have sent Thompson out there for the field goal attempt, not for a fourth and nine first down when you're that far into the red zone. I understand that he is a gambler in this regard. Let's push it and push it and push it. That's been his philosophy. Let's want get the opponents uh, tired, wear them into the ground early in the game. I understand that. Uh, but I still think that when you are on the 15-yard line, you're still well within your kicker's range. You take advantage of that. On the other hand, with a scoreless tie, you're not behind, and it's just the same equivalent as a deep punt. So it really didn't hurt hurt this team for that call to be made. It was a decision where you could see both sides of the coin. Absolutely. Wisconsin on their first carry doesn't get much, and we haven't seen Wisconsin. And we have, looks like we have another player down, perhaps. We have an injury timeout, and they're carrying some one of the Wolves off the field. I'm inclined to say Wisconsin, but we are two Wisconsin teams. That was number 52 for the Wolves, Kerry well, Massa. Kerry Massa. Kerry Massa from Tomahawk, went to college at University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point. She'll have to set up this play. She did walk off with some help. It's second and 12. Another carry to Wesley. Right, I've been to Running Tomahawk. the reverse. Uh, Wesley tackled from behind, couldn't get a number, but Wisconsin at the 10, so a gain of about four. Mike, have you ever been to Tomahawk, Wisconsin? I can't say I have. Okay. I haven't been to many places in Wisconsin. Uh, Madison and Milwaukee and I, River Falls, I've been there once. Have you been to Green Bay? Still working on that. Okay, we're gonna take you this next season if the uh, NFL has a season. I'm pretty sure they will. I talked with Willie Howard about that before the game and he's pretty confident they'll resolve their negotiations, but right now I think he's uh, trying to negotiate his way to a victory. For Willie, winning is not everything, it's the important thing. <laughs> Third and nine. Another carry. No, it's a play action. Incomplete pass. Wesley, the intended receiver. 
And there was some miscommunication. Wesley was running left, the ball was going right. Now that last comment I made, that was my impersonation at Yogi Berra. <laughs> I wonder if he played football. I heard he was one heck of a great catcher. <laughs> it's deja vu all over again. <laughs> there was a penalty against Minnesota. May have been pass interference. The ball spotted at the 25 and a fresh set of downs for the Wolves. I didn't see the flag. No, I didn't see it either. But we're up here and not down there. And I turn 40 next month, so I'm getting old. <laughs> well, Taj McWilliams Franklin is 40, and she's still playing. But she's the one who says she's getting old. <laughs> 2.39 left in the first quarter. Another carry up the middle, and that produces maybe a two-yard gain. And for those who don't know, Taj McWilliams Franklin happens to be a forward for the Minnesota Lynx of the WNBA. And she is one of two 40-year-old players in the league, Cheryl Swoops being the other. Swoops plays for the Tulsa Shock. And you saw a couple of Minnesota Machine players at the Lynx game last night. Tell me about it, Mike. Yes, I did. Well, Kim Miller, I have, haven't asked her personally, but I imagine she's a season ticket holder. I saw her at the season opener, or the home opener, against the Los Angeles Sparks, and I saw her last night in the Lynx's victory over the Atlanta Dream. And it's... Right now, though, it's second and ten. And with the carry is Adrian's. Adrian's finding a hole, and she is tackled by Katrina Stewart, but not before Wisconsin gets a first down carry. Ten yard gain. Okay, no, they do spot her just short of the first down. And I, and I have to say that that was one incredible fake because Kendra Kilpatrick was completely faked out when the running back ran right by her with the ball, Kilpatrick didn't even see her, had her eyes focused on the quarterback, and then stopped and said, whoops, let me go back, and that led to the game. That play could have easily been broken up. Talk about fooling the announcers, too. Had me fooled. Another handoff, and that will be enough for the first down. Wisconsin converts on third down. Now the other Minnesota Machine player at the Lynx game yesterday is Hannah Cheese, who works security at Target Center. In fact, she stood right in front of me. I had no idea that same person was also the running back for the Minnesota Machine. And Until right now we have 52 seconds remaining in the first period. And so far the rain has let up, but we have a little bit of a fog, which probably tells me the temperature and the dew point are close to each other. They very well are. But we're getting a light breeze, so it's cooling things off in the press box. Adrian's with the carry and wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage by the Minnesota defensive line. That should be the last play of the first quarter. Well, Mike, I will have to say, if you uh, look over the field on the Wisconsin lineup, they have an interesting uh, water bucket contraption over there. Uh, this is... I see it now. Yeah, they've got a bit large hose that comes in, and then they've got uh, about five or six other hoses that connect right off of them. Uh, on a day like today, having a hydration source is very important. The humidity is way up there, and as these players are all in pads, running around on a, on a field with this humidity, you need to cool off, you need to stay hydrated. Otherwise, you start cramping up, you start having uh, headaches associated with... Um, hydration issues, and hydration is important. And the, the I have to, I just have to say, I'm just amazed by that contraption. <laughs> I've seen that at a few high school games. We have reached the end of the first quarter and a scoreless tie. So Minnesota, right now with the upper hand, again, they need to give up less than three touchdowns. They have a 21 point cushion as the overall record is irrelevant in a playoff scenario that- So, so Mike, what is the playoff scenario? Playoff scenario is this. Because Minnesota has the better divisional record, the overall record is irrelevant. Minnesota. So Minnesota wins, they're in. Minnesota wins, they're in. If Minnesota loses, if it's is Wisconsin in? Not quite. Wisconsin has to beat Minnesota by 22 points or more to win the divisional tiebreaker by points, four points against. Okay. But it's a playoff scenario that... So with, with three quarters left, a scoreless tie for the Minnesota machine is a good thing. 
for the Wisconsin Wolves, it's still a dangerous thing because not only are you fighting the opposing team, you're also fighting the clock. And the score. When I was explained, or when I was given the explanation for the playoff breakdown, it rang some bells with uh, NASCAR and their first implementation of pit road rules in the 1991 season. I'll explain that later, but we have second and 12 after a two yard loss for the Wolves. And naturally you see Minnesota stuffing the box with Wisconsin's offensive formation. Nothing there. Maybe a gain of one as Wesley or Edelbeck got the carry. Edelbeck. So it's third and 11. From Stevens Point, Wisconsin. 5'7", 175 pound tight end. I, I'm guessing you've been to Stevens Point too? Been to Stevens Point too. Where haven't you been in Wisconsin? That's a good question. <laughs> Are you sure you don't live there? <laughs> Actually, there is one place in Wisconsin I have not been, and that is Door County. I have not been to Door County yet, but I've been everywhere else. I've even been to Boscobel and Broadhead. Third and 11. Passing play on a screen to Edelbeck. Nice screen play. But you won't get far, and Wisconsin will have fourth and long. With the tackle, Heather Baker was one of the machine players to get to her. And Minnesota staying grounded on defense. Mike, have you been to the Apostle Islands? I have not been to Wisconsin a whole lot myself, so I can't say I've been to the Apostle Islands. Uh, uh, the only times I've been to Wisconsin, as I mentioned, I was in Madison to see Jeff Dunham perform at the Alliant Energy Coliseum in the fairgrounds. I was at Miller Park in Milwaukee to watch a Brewers-Twins game, and I was at River Falls to cover a youth soccer game three years ago. Have you been to Hudson? I've been through Hudson. Actually, no, I did go in Hudson as uh, Smith Scooping up the punt. She's in trouble. And the flag is down. We'll check the marker, but a great punt, and Smith had trouble fielding it. That cost her a return opportunity. And it's probably going to be an illegal block in the back. As the officials confer. Oh, no. False start. Or illegal formation. So we may have a re-kick. Minnesota, like Minnesota accepting the penalty. The so they will have a re-kick, and that's big. Is that is huge because that that punt was misfielded. That play was broken up. There was no way, nowhere for Abby Smith to go, and yet they get a second opportunity. That is crucial, and that is another thing that the Wisconsin Wolves are battling. You know, again, in order to get the playoffs, which is ultimately what this game is all about for both teams, they have to play flawless ball. But Wisconsin has to outperform Minnesota. They have to win by 22 points or greater. And right now, a play like that, when you're giving your opponent a free kick opportunity, is crucial. This time, Smith fields it, and she has room. On the left, trying to cut, looking for blocking. Breaks free, now trying to cut right, still going. Look at Smith. She has done everything but reach the end zone. Brought down at the 24 yard line. And I was going to say, having to re-punt is big because you just sent your special teams unit down the field once, and so having them field again is much more difficult because they used up a lot of energy. That was a 60 yard penalty by the Wisconsin Wolves. 60 yards. You could have had first and 10 for Minnesota on their own 15 yard line, but instead we've got first and 10 at your 24. 61 yards. I'll say this, Abby Smith has really developed as a special teams returner. That's one of the things that this team has been missing in the last two seasons was somebody to return punts and kicks. I mean, Abby Smith has done a great job in that. I, well, two seasons ago, their very first season, I do remember Abby Krause broke, I think, a 50 or 60 yard opening kickoff against, I think, the Nebraska Stampede back for a touchdown. That happened, but without Abby Krause out there, you got Abby Smith, who's just doing phenomenal work. 
There's just got to be something about Abbeys and special teams that go hand in hand together. 13-04 in the second. Thompson with her first pass of the day was looking for Boyles, but she got tripped up by Adrians. Second and 10 coming up for Minnesota. Now we'd like to remind you, the sportsbrain1.blogspot.com is where you can go to get DVD copies of this and all of the Minnesota Machine games this season. We don't have any more home games after this, of course, but we will have a highlight film in time for their team dinner in the fall. So check that out. We'll talk more about that later. Second and 10, pitch to Cheese. Cheese has some space on the left side. Oh my goodness, she just bowled over her that defender. That was Yolanda Cersei, Cersei on that I, one. That was Cersei, you're correct. Well, we're even now. I double checked that three <laughs> times before I opened my mouth. <laughs> We know it was not Maggie Alt, it was not Goodman, it was not Chase, it was Yolanda Yo Cersei. We have another player, another down, player down. It's looks like two Wisconsin players as Cersei. Oh, she had put a great stiff arm. She's getting better as the season's going on. It's gonna be first down and 10 for the machine. That's one thing you have to credit Willie Howard on and his coaching staff. They have different multiple points of attack. Yeah, and they've got a lot of depth to this team, so if they need to put somebody else in at running back, they've got somebody there. They need to put somebody else in at offensive line or the defensive line, they've got somebody else. They develop, that staff develops this team very well. Uh, I, I can't speak highly enough of the coaching staff of the Minnesota Machine this year. Trying to get a number of the Wolves that looks like it's just one player that took a hit. Cersei had a six yard touchdown run. Tiffany Adrians was the one sitting down by her, but she got up and walked off. That may be Edelman. Or Edelbeck. Yes, it was yes, Edelbeck. Edelbeck. Who went down? Cersei, as we mentioned, six yard touchdown run last week against the explosion. Well, the good thing is Edelbeck is up walking under her own power. That's a, a good sign. Hey, and Adrian's got up two. They both will have to sit out this next play, I believe. Well, no, Adrian's got up and no. she's joining the huddle, but Edelbeck will have to sit out the next play. I think Adrian's may have just taken a quick break there. It is pretty humid. First and 10 on the 10-yard line. 12-51. First and goal. No, actually, it's first and 10. It's not first and goal. Minnesota could cross the one and still get a first down, but it would be very close without scoring. Thompson, Thompson. touchdown, Minnesota with the reception, Becky Bowman. 10-yard touchdown catch, old Daniel Thompson. She can add that to her resume. That was an incredible pass. It was very, very tight, very great spiral. This is what you look for in a quarterback. Well, I'd say Green Bay if they had a spot, but Aaron Rodgers has that covered. But our local teams are looking for a quarterback. Well, they just drafted one. Christian Ponder, well, he could use a backup. There we go. We could use a competition at the quarterback spot. How, are the, how are the Vikings set at kicker this year? Well, they still have Longwell, the <laughs> former Packer, so. Minnesota going for two. Well, with Thompson now quarterbacking, her kicking duties may be limited. Going to Searcy. Searcy trying to cut right. Still and on pushes her, feet. her way, but not, not across the goal good line. Enough. It's six to nothing, Minnesota, with 12:38 left in the first half. In order for Wisconsin to get to the playoffs, they have to score 28 more points. Unanswered. Unanswered. And I don't think I've seen Minnesota give up more point, more 28 points with the exception of their first week loss to the Chicago Force. That was a 66 nothing shutout, if I recall. But that was an anomaly. Yes. Since then, Minnesota solid on defense. 
as we have a few raindrops here at Einar Anderson Stadium. Fortunately, we're in a press box and are shielded from the rain, and our primary cameraman is shielded from the rain. How is our secondary cameraman doing? Uh, he may be taking a break since we didn't have enough rain gear here. Forecast changed literally overnight. At first they said this would clear, and then the front that was supposed to move through had stalled. So altered our setup a bit, but we still have this game in for you. As Thompson kicks, and it's Wesley on the return for the Wolves, and she is taken she is from taken behind. Down. Katrina Stewart with the tackle. Wisconsin will start at the 35-yard line. Now, as they change possessions here, I understand you have a token or a keepsake that I forgot to bring, and I admit responsibility for my mental lapse, but why don't you go ahead and explain that? Well, Mike, I was at the National Eagle Center yesterday in uh, Wabasha, Minnesota, and I had a chance to see an old friend. Uh, ten years ago, I had done some volunteer work with the Minnesota Raptor Center. Wisconsin takes a timeout. And I had the honor of cutting up rats to feed to eagles. Now, I know a lot of our viewers may be saying, ooh, rats, but hey, it's part of the eagles diet. I didn't create the eagles diet. I went in and I did my duty and made sure that those eagles were fed. But then, of course, with September 11th, 2001 happening, and I had subsequently deployed overseas of the Air Force, therefore my term with the Raptor Center had expired. And I had a chance to see yesterday at the National Eagle Center one of the eagles that I used to feed. It was, her name is Columbia. Uh, she was uh, really, really improved from the last time I saw her. She had a broken wing, was hit by a car in Wisconsin, brought to the Raptor Center, rehabilitated. That's when I was feeding her. And then she is now used as an education bird at the National Eagle Center in Wabasha. And funny thing is I walked in and I saw that bird right away. I knew that was the bird. And as soon as I opened my mouth, that bird turned around and recognized me. So, Mike, in honor of Columbia, I want to present you with a little stuffed animal here. <laughs> we'll, to have you. A, we'll have a picture as we don't have a camera in the press box. More on this in a second. We have first and ten. Adrian's. No, that's Wesley with the carry. Oh, oh what a tackle. Taken down for a loss. Line of scrimmage. Mary Walruff just hammered. Hammered. She's got, the, Aubrey. she's got the eagle mentality. <laughs> Swooped in and made the tackle. Now we'll show some pictures of the eagles that were presented. Aubrey These are stuffed like eagles got. from Aurora at 695. So you can get your very own replica. But uh, I got one from Jeff. His eagle was named Columbia. And uh, at the next stop, at next time out, I'll reveal the name of my eagle. That'll work. And we got to give the fans something to look forward to. Well, you got to give me something to look forward to. <laughs> so we'll set that there. It's eight yard loss. Minnesota homing in on the rushing attack of Wisconsin. But now it's a play action. Almost oh, intercepted. Incomplete, almost picked off by Don Schmidt. Schmidt was ready, just a little off target. We have 11.34 remaining in the first half. It's third, is it third? Third, third and 18. And 18. The Again, scoreboard uh, and the marker are in sync. Finally. <laughs> and this has been a fun season. Oh, it has. Uh, but it, hey, I, have to, I also have to give props off to the scoreboard operator, the PA announcer, also to the uh, folks holding the chains and, uh, and the uh, down marker. I mean, everybody out here on the game day operations crew is a volunteer. They don't get paid. They do this, you know, to promote women's sports. Another play action. And that this one, time, oh, oh almost Abby picked Smith up by Abby had, Smith. Almost had the pick. Christy Miller getting a little shaken up by the Minnesota defense. Fourth and 18 from the 27. Now explain for Miller maybe why it's difficult. You know, you throw it out there and you're thinking, well, how can you throw it to a machine player? Well, when you're back there and you have all those linemen, Sometimes it's hard to see. Well, it's hard to see, but the other is, even though this is women's football, which is usually slower paced than the men's game, the fact is they still move toward the ball really, really quick. As we're in punt formation right now. Smith 
to receive this. She's almost broken for touchdowns twice. Tiffany Adrians with the punt. And Smith will try again. Gets to the 35. Still going. Still going. Look at her just Brought beat the down coverage. at the 21-yard line. Now that is something that the Wisconsin Wolves are going to have to address in this offseason if they're going to be in the playoffs next year. And Smith. Pure and simple, their special de team's defense is atrocious right now. And I think they all know that if we're going, that their playoff chances right now are slipping through their fingers. Uh, next season, if they address that special team's problem, I think that you're going to see a different Wisconsin Wolves team. First and 10 from the 22, I think the machine have found their Devin Hester. Smith. Well, we got Willie He's, Howard coaching. I think I'd go with Desmond Howard. <laughs> Cersei, Cersei trying to break through. Doesn't get far. Gets to the 18, four yard gain. About two and a half yards, maybe three. Two and a half yards, maybe three. There's that half yard thing again. <laughs> well, the marker has it, a five yard gain actually. The five, uh, marker has it on the 18, which is about five, six yards away. But it's tough to see sometimes when you have all those bodies. We should mention so again. That would have been a four yard gain. We should mention Lisa Olson. They have second and five on the scoreboard. Lisa Olson at public address announcer duties today. Her first stab at that assignment, not playing today. Thompson lining up. I formation. And whistle and we, flag. Looks like a false start. Yep, it, it is. is. Second and 10. Well, oh, that put the ball. The 22, 22 and a half. <laughs> Now, the last time Minnesota submitted stats, they averaged about four penalties a game until we came in and against Nebraska, they had eight. And penalties, actually, they had six in the loss to Iowa and uh, didn't have, the, and Mike, most that, of them were kicks it, out of bounds. In that last play on that penalty, you have to credit Sonia Marsh. Sonia Marsh had really done some stunting in the, in the uh, defensive secondary, came up on the line. Cersei carries to the 20, so third and eight coming to jitter. And Kudrowski on the tackle. Oh, I've got the roster right here, too, if you want to take a look. Maybe I should move it over there. There, there we you go. go. <laughs> yeah, we don't quite have monitors that can present us stats. We don't have iPads. We don't have a lot, but we take stock in what we have. Ten minutes and counting in quarter number two. And we don't have video games named after ourselves. Not yet. Give it time. Third and eight. I formation again. Thompson looking back to throw. Going again to Bowman. Are you kidding me? Oh, wow. Touchdown, Minnesota. Thompson finding a favorite receiver quickly. And Becky Bowman, 20-yard touchdown pass. And that doubles her previous touchdown pass. And now 10. Wisconsin has to score 34 unanswered points in order to have postseason play. This is incredible. And you have to credit Thompson with having a pass on the numbers. And I think this shows Danielle's, uh, her value with this team, because right now she's doing just about everything. I think she even run, helps run the team website. They'll go for two again. Again, Thompson at quarterback, so they can't use her to kick. And once oh. again, her pass is deflected. So no two-point conversions, but Minnesota with a two-possession lead and all the momentum as they hold a 12-0 lead with 9.43 to go in and, the second. And Maria Darth got a hand on that, batted the ball back from Heartland, Wisconsin. She went to Waukesha County Technical College. Okay, Heartland, Wisconsin is one place I don't think I've ever been. However... My father used to manage a country kitchens restaurant in Waukesha, so I know I've been to Waukesha County. <laughs> now we're at a stoppage in place. You weren't even born then, by the way. Probably not. Stoppage in play here. So the name of my eagle, I went through a couple names. I had one originally, then I switched because I didn't think it would fit. So on the screen that you can see at home, I'd like you to meet Rockford. Rockford. <laughs> Is that anywhere in relation to Jim Rockford or the Rockford <laughs> Files? Yes, I was my first candidate was Les Nesman, but I don't think that's very fitting of an eagle. No. Although, what, Nesman looked like he did have eagle eyes <laughs> on that TV show. No, Nesman was uh, more worried about falling turkeys. That's true. 
But Rockford, Eagles, I saw a symbolism there, and Rockford is one of the nicknames I've been given by one of our cameramen, Tony Gear, throughout the years. So I have Spock already. Now it's time to pass along the Rockford name and keep that alive and going. Thompson to kick. Another, well, squib not quite kick. an onside, a squib to number 22 of the Wolves. Lila Big John. And Big John. Who's almost immediately taken down. 5'8", 210-pound fullback, and for Big John, return not so big a deal, but the fact Wisconsin will have good field position to start this drive. That's a big break for Wisconsin. They got to make 34 points up and a little over a half. Half plus 9.38. Not a lot of time to do that much scoring. So they'll take any benefit that they can get. 46-yard line is where the Wolves will start this drive. They have no relation, of course, to our local Wolves, the Minnesota Timberwolves, and given that they're a basketball team, uh, wouldn't be much. Christy Miller set to receive. She Fake hands off. off. It was to Adrian's, and Adrian's pushes forward for a gain of three. Wolves run up the middle with number 31. And Miller does a great Adrian's job with those fake handoffs. Second down. So are Christy and Kim Miller related? Probably not, but Kim Miller, quarterback, the Minnesota machine. I think last year. Last she year. She, and then she got hurt. And, and she's the, the uh, quarterback's, quarterback's coach. coach. You know, she stays involved with the machine. They're still looking at Mandy Merriman as Miller evaluating her knee. Hand off Adrian's, to Adrian's. And she's got a lot of space on the left side. This will be a first down and more. Adrian still on her feet. Not quite a touchdown run. And if she wasn't taken down from behind by Kendra Kilpatrick, it may have been, but she gets to the 17 yard line, a gain of 26 yards. And Don Schmidt had a good angle, but was she was able to run right past Schmidt. Wisconsin's first big play of the game in. For the Wolves, it's baby steps. You're not going to get 34 points in one play. you got to get it one at a time. That would be a miracle. If there's a 34-point play in football, I'd like to find out. I'm guessing you haven't come across any in your research. No. There was a drop kick rule, but no 34-point <laughs> play. Another reverse. This time it's Wesley. Wesley trying to turn the corner, and she gets another first down carry. One thing I noticed is that Wisconsin now shows a sense of urgency that they have not shown in their previous possessions. Aubrey Wesley with the carry. First and goal for the Wolves, and what a quick response. And Mary we have a timeout with 8.05 left, so as we take this timeout, Minnesota really ramped up. It was all about focus. Lisa Olson, the team's owner, sent an email out to the team and they all respond, well, most of them responded by noon today. That was her goal. And it was all about getting the team focused, telling them what's at stake. Essentially your motivational coach speech that you see in sports movies. I don't think Wisconsin did that. Well, their speech might be coming now with 8.05 left in the second quarter. <laughs> They're taking their words and using it into action. But Minnesota certainly doing the same, especially on offense. They may want to look for another kicker with the way Daniel Thompson is passing right now. I will have to say that this Minnesota machine game uh, team, after last week's disappointing loss to the Iowa Explosion, it was a uh, missed field goal. The field goal was about two yards short. As time expired, uh, gave the Iowa team a 20 to 17 win. I think this team was really upset and disappointed because they feel that they've outperformed the Iowa Explosion all game long. And just a couple of letdowns put that Iowa team up. And I think this time around, they've come to play. First and goal, another fake carry, and it's a touchdown for the Wisconsin Wolves. Miller again with another fake to Edelbeck, and Aubrey Wesley with a five-yard touchdown run, her 11th on the season. It's going to be interesting to see now how Willie Howard motivates this team at halftime. 
If they can continue this lead, right now it's 12 to six. We'll see what they do here. Looks like they're going for two. Or two point. They're huddling in a two point formation. But you have to like the response from Wisconsin after Thompson with another touchdown pass. Absolutely. Wisconsin, I mean, Wisconsin, they could have folded. They could have easily folded and said, well, that's it. Just go out on, have fun. Well, they're saying we still have a lot of work to do, and we're going to go right down fighting. And they came back with the score and the two-point conversion. Miller to Wesley, and Miller was under pressure. Give her credit for keeping her composure. It's 12-8. to eight. That score somewhat irrelevant, though. Again, Wisconsin has to well, win by 22 or more. I wouldn't say it's irrelevant. I think when you can cut that lead from 12 to nothing to 12 to 8, that shows progress. It shows momentum. Now, for Wisconsin, they have to make a stop. Then they have to go back and score another touchdown and a, a conversion and try to get a lead by halftime. They can do that, but Minnesota's not going to just take that sitting down or standing up. They're not going to take it one bit. They're going to come down here, and and Willie Howard is going to keep that fire lit under his team to not let up. The bigger stat, of course, Wisconsin now with that eight points touchdown. Well, six points, two point conversion. The margin goes back to 25, I believe, or 26. They have to score 26, 26 points. So again, one at a time though. They know they can't score 34 at once. They got eight. So if they can get a stop, like you said, maybe get a lead, that gives them two full quarters to perhaps run the tables on offense. And Wisconsin's not out of this yet by any means, but they are fighting the clock. There is that sense of urgency, however. Now let's see as both teams get set for the kickoff. Fighting two opponents on one front, 7.55 left. The one thing I have to say that they are not fighting tonight are the officials. The officials have called a really, really fair game tonight. Stewart bobbled the catch. Looking for blocking now. Going up the middle. And she's tackled at the 42. Looked like there could have been a face masking on that, but there was no call. Sonia Marsh got in there. The shot to the head. Unintentional. In the NFL, that would have been one of the five-point penalty or five-yard penalties. I think they changed it where face masks are 15, 15 yards, regardless of intention. What the really the NFL stepped up on, and I imagine other leagues will do the same, was concussions, and I have to give them credit for that. Although I have heard from some former players to say that some of the concussion stuff in the league right now is in the NFL right now. As Cersei gets knocked for a two-yard loss. But uh, former, some of the former NFL players that I have had the opportunity of knowing over the years, they've told me that a lot of this is just posturing for uh, the collective bargaining agreement and the lockout and all of that, and they question the sincerity of the NFL. Now, whether or not the NFL is truly doing this or if whether the players are just making unfounded allegations, I guess we'll find out once they resolve this lockout, once they get back into playing. We'll see if the league continues to take an aggressive stand against concussions. It was ruled a two-yard game by Cersei with forward progress on second and eight here with an eye formation, and Thompson threads the needle to Boyles for a first down pass. I thought that was going to be intercepted. And that was a beautiful pass, the third beautiful pass that we have seen from Thompson so far in this first half since she came in for the injured Merriman. Wonder if she had time to study perhaps Rodgers or Favre or maybe Bart Starr. Fran Tarkenton. <laughs> Tarkenton. I know Danny L is a big Vikings fan. I'm so not going to be Tarkenton. It would be Tarkenton. I don't think it would. It could be Kramer, too. I mean, in the younger Kramer. Tommy Kramer? Yes. Brad Salisbury. Uh, yeah, Brad Salisbury. Sean Salisbury. Cersei with the carry. Finds a hole and gets. Extends seven. out there. Nine yard gain. Looked like she was going to be wrapped up for a short gain and broke a couple tackles. Second down. And my apologies to Sean Salisbury for uh, mispronouncing or for forgetting his first name. <laughs> I know better than that. Sean's a really good guy, and he's he runs some quarterback camps. Uh, he's down in Texas now. And he still is active in, uh, well, he's active in broadcasting, or has been active in broadcasting, but developing players in the future. So my hat's off to Sean Salisbury. Tully 
with the carry. She needed one and gets three. Machine first down. First down, and that's all Minnesota has to do right now. They don't have to do anything fancy. Number 63 on the tackle. They're just looking to get first downs, maintain the lead, importantly, especially going into halftime, because that would really put the pressure on the Wolves. I'm watching Coach Howard on the sideline right now. He's got his head down, and I know he's thinking. He understands what's at stake. Thompson looking to throw again. Bauman, another completion. That's the third time Thompson has found Bauman. It's a short gain, but Machine will take it. Five yards here, six yards here. Adrian's, Adrian's having to walk off the field. Limping off the field. Four forty remaining in the first half. It was a seven yard gain officially. Second and third. Ball is on the Minnesota on the uh, Wisconsin twenty five yard line. Thompson going to Cersei on the pitch. Cersei breaks through more holes and now she's got space on the right side, but wrapped up quickly. Gets to the 19 yard line. That's good well, enough for first down. Five yard gain. Cersei went right well, after Kudrowski, the, the defensive lineman. And we have another Wisconsin player down. I don't think they're using the hydration station enough. Cramping an issue. Well, of course, cramping an issue in any weather, we should point out. Cold, hot, mild. But with the temperature and the dew point close to each other, conditions are quite sticky right now. You can feel it outside. It's number 40. Nicole Schroeder. 5'10", 190-pound defensive back, and your theory could very well be correct. Not hydrating enough. Well, she didn't look to have taken that serious of a shot during that last play. I think when she went down, it looks to be either, um, looks to be either a um, bruise or just hydration issues, and I, and I think it's the latter. And I was talking with a former machine player at the state tournament last year. Hydration and getting your body ready, for many players, if you want to do it well, it starts not just on game day, but the day before. Absolutely. First and 10, a six yard gain by Cersei. And they'll go to her again. Run up the middle, gains, oh, decent gain of five yards. As the clock continues to tick, there is, of course, the two-minute warning, which uh, one of my comrades thought it was a TV-related timeout, didn't understand how, how the two-minute warning was established, and it was back before electronic timing. And so the officials used that two minute warning to make sure their clocks were in sync. Exactly. That was back in the 20s and 30s. Back when they had 60 minute men. Players who played both sides of the ball. Plenty of minute men here, or minute women I should say. Thompson looking to throw. Holy oh, cow! Man. Katie Flynn hauls in the catch. Another first down by Minnesota. Thompson was under pressure and she's cool. I think she's five for six right now. I know there was one incompletion, but I think she has now hit her fifth completed pass out of six attempts. And you just saw her in the pocket. Pressure was mounting, but she didn't force it. She she's got poise. For a target. She has poise. You sure she's not studying some Aaron Rodgers film, even though she may be a Vikings fan? Cersei on the carry. Cutting left. Trying to lunge past the plane. Touchdown. Yes. Seven she yard touchdown run. Cersei with her first rushing touchdown of the day. The first rushing touchdown of the game by Minnesota. And a nice response after Wisconsin was ready to knock on the door and say we're back. Well, that's a now an 18 to eight, 10 point lead for uh, Minnesota. And now Thompson lining up for the extra point. And Thompson, and it's good. 
Thompson can still kick. 19 to eight, that now puts 33 unanswered points are what Wisconsin Wolves need in the last, uh, in, the, in the entire second half in the last two minutes and 29 seconds in the first half in order to get to the playoffs. Now they are definitely fighting the clock. And since we are coming up on halftime, we will let you know that at halftime, we'll show some clips of what machine players were doing in the off season. And our first game of the year, we brought on a film producer who hired a machine player for her series. And of course, we had some technical problems. Her name was Ty Green. She hired Carmen Richardson, Big C as they call her on the team. And on the film crew, she participated in a series called Them. So we will run a scene from that series show Carmen's versatility in acting. I know Ty was thrilled to be here. She loved seeing that game, and it was uh, unfortunate we couldn't bring that game to you, but we'll do the best we can to bring her and Carmen Richardson in spirit as Thompson, Wisconsin letting the ball run to, out of bounds, and, and did they touch Smith. it? Yes, Wisconsin, yes, touched Wisconsin it. touches it. And it is Smith. a turnover, and, Howard, and Willie Howard is just pumped on the sideline. Just like the Minnesota Lynx were pumped after Maya Moore with a fast break layup on a dish from Whalen. Willie Howard and the machine are pumped up. Number 50 on the Wolves, Maria Durth touched the ball, and of course that makes it live for the kicking team. And Katie, or Abby Smith, Abby Smith no just. touchdown yet, but she's done everything else on special teams. That was a huge break for the Minnesota machine. They've already got an 11 point lead, but now their whole thing is playoffs, playoffs, playoffs. Wisconsin, is this gonna be a game changer? Are they gonna be deflated after this? We still have a lot of ball of a lot of football left in this game, but they just really had a miscue that really may have cost them their last remaining shot at postseason play. Thompson looking for Boyles with the coverage. Five Lila for Big seven. John. Five for seven, I'm gonna guess probably about 78 yards. I mean, that's the next step for the machine. Well, that would be the next step is to have a statistician for us. And uh, again, though, we take stock of what we have and as this league expands, uh, that's something I imagine will be considered. Well, I hope they consider it. It'll make our job easier, but Certainly. I know that we're the last ones that, they, <laughs> that the league actually really considers because they got, you know, the issues with teams and players and game day ops. We're just an icing on the cake. Cersei with another carry. And she just finds a way to break tackles and turns losses into small gains and small gains into decent gains. And But as we were saying, yeah, we understand where we are in the pecking order of things. Absolutely. <laughs> as we hit down to the two minute warning, We've got some players Wisconsin slow players. to get up. And That's, we're at the two minute warning. That was Koch Cassandra, or Cassandra Koch. Koch. Coke. Cook. Cassandra Cook. Cook, Koch, or Coke. <laughs> With some assistance from the Wisconsin Wolves camera operator who shoots the game film for the team. K-O-C-H, I know people who've gone by Cook, Koch, and Co. So I don't know how she uh, pronounces hers, but I'm going to assume We have it's the next Cook. best thing right next to us here in the booth. I'm going to assume it's Cook. That's what he said it was. <laughs> and you have to credit these guys from coming all the way over from Wausau and other teams who come up here. And again, it's the same for Minnesota. They bring their rosters up here. They bring their crew up here. And they are just as dedicated as the players are on the field to providing the most complete coverage of their local teams. Well, it's that kind of support that's gonna help this league grow. And speaking of Wausau, I've spent many, many, many hours at the Rib Mountain Rest Area on my travels through Wisconsin. <laughs> now here's the interesting thing. There is no Green Bay WFA team. Not yet. Third and four, Cersei almost wrapped up behind the line but breaks another tackle. Stopped at the 14-yard line, close to the first down, but a yard short. It's third, fourth, and one. And looks like they're going to measure her. They're bringing the sticks out. 
and we'll pull at the end of the third well, quarter. Well, they've called for them. The pot, the machine gets the other half. There we go. Here comes the chain gang, which features Jenny Olson, <laughs> one of the machine volunteers, and kind of strange music for a measurement. The last time I checked, this isn't United Center. That should be just enough. And yes. It's a first down, Minnesota machine. So Cersei by inches with another first down conversion. And well, maybe the music did it, Mike. Perhaps. And Cersei really developing in the last couple games. So against Nebraska, she struggled a first bit. Down machine. Had trouble finding space. And here she's just getting better at breaking tackles and turning minimal gains into big ones. One thing that Cersei does is to not back down against the opposing defensive linemen. She goes after them. She attacks them. And she goes right again as a pitch out on the right side over to Cersei. Still pushing. Going to the five. Melissa Koloff had an opportunity to take her down in the backfield, but Cersei got through. Ball is placed on the five yard line. Minnesota second down. Second and one, a nine yard gain. It looked like Cersei would be wrapped up again in the backfield and she will have none of it today. And this Minnesota machine team, as we have now under a minute remaining in the half, they're showing a sense of urgency to try to get into the end zone. Tully with the carry at fullback. And Willie, Willie Howard, Howard calls timeout. a timeout. You could hear him in the press box. He timeout. wanted to make sure that that timeout was called and everybody in the stadium knew it. Timeouts do not carry over, of course, in half, so use them or lose them. But what Cersei's performance has done, as we have first and goal at the two, it takes a little bit of pressure off Cheese. Hannah, of course, was a mid-season addition to the team, and so she had to learn everything kind of late. I'm wondering if she's not facing an injury of her own because I don't. If she's sitting there on the bench with her he uh, helmet off. Well, talking with Swan McCloud, number 18. And we have Chris Walden joining us. He kept his camera. Oh, he's got a bay. We, we may have to talk to him at halftime about. Uh, I think we're going to talk to him yes. at halftime. See if we can get him on the field. <laughs> Walden and Jeff Williams are friends. I was introduced to him last week. And uh, Walden and I have a similar pursuits in television production. But right now, the Thompson. pursuits. Takes Thompson. it in and touchdown. touchdown. Danielle Thompson on the quarterback draw. Two yard touchdown run. Well, she has a passing touchdown. Now she has a touchdown on the run. She also has an extra point. And now that's the next question. Does she go for another one? We'll find out. <laughs> we'll see what Coach Howard calls. And just a reminder that Willie Howard coached the Minnesota Dragons, uh, sem men's semi-pro team last year. Is it too late to get a mic on Chris before <laughs> the first half ends? 43.1 seconds left. There is a player down for Wisconsin, and we were talking about hydration. A lot well, Mike, of I'm just going to surrender this over here for about 30 <laughs> seconds over to okay. Chris. Let's get you in here talking about the Wisconsin, Dra uh, Wisconsin. Minnesota Dragons. All right. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot for the mic time, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've been, uh, I took game film for the Dragons last year, met Coach Howard there, and uh, yeah, Machine had a bit of a problem, some coaching last year midstream. Coach Howard decided he'd coach both teams for a while. And then, of course, he got his job at the high school and decided he couldn't coach the men's team anymore. Uh, just, you know, had too many things going on at once. You know, it was kind of an amicable split, but you know, we're glad to see he's doing well here. Um, Thompson, two for two on point afters. Well, that how often does the quarterback get all seven points for a team? We'd have to check. I mean to talk to Lisa about this. Well, we're going to have to talk about that, but uh, <laughs> the, yeah, the fact is, Willie Howard knows what he has with this team. And it looks like Chris Walden is going to join us in the second half as a cameraman. 
But now we've got a 26 to eight Minnesota machine domination over the Wisconsin Wolves with 43.1 seconds remaining in the half. For the Wisconsin Wolves, they have to beat Minnesota, which already is right now looking impossible, but not just beat them by one point. They have to beat the Minnesota machine by 22 points in order to make the playoffs. At this point in time, that is... Nicole Schroeder falls on it at the 43-yard line. Abby Smith was ready. She was ready for another Wolf to touch the ball, but not this time. Well, and Schrader was ready for that. She she was going to make sure that when she, if she fielded the ball, that she got it cleanly and immediately went down and not caused that turnover. I'll say this, Minnesota not content to what they say back their way into the playoffs. They want to win outright. Now Wisconsin needs to score 40 unanswered points to get into playoff contention. And we're winding down with 38.9 seconds left in the first half. That is an almost impossible feat as Wisconsin takes another timeout. Interesting because the clock stopped. Would change of possession, of course, 38.9 seconds left. I think Wisconsin's going to come out of this with a no-huddle offense, so they need to line up to have what they're going to do for the next couple of plays in succession and not waste more time in the huddle as the game clock is set to expire in these next few plays. Not to mention Minnesota gets the ball to start the second half, and with the momentum swing they have, I think Wisconsin... Even if they could get three points out of this, it would be big on the morale. And we've seen the running game get a couple breaks, so anything is possible. We talked about it last week. Uh, well, one, other, one important thing Lombard, for, oh, for, for both teams, it's important to have clean ball control. They want to control, but they got to make sure they eliminate turnovers. There was a crucial turnover on a kickoff not too long ago that really set the Wisconsin this Wisconsin team back back by more than one possession because Minnesota scored out of that two big plays have set the stage in this first half another fake handoff and this time it's Wesley on the reverse and Cersei keeps her in bounds two big plays there was the illegal motion penalty that moved the ball essentially 60 yards. And that Smith misfielded it, and then she had a great return on the second attempt. And the second big play was the fumble and this recovery may be by the Smith. last play of the first half as we're under 10 seconds. Wisconsin may be Six, out of timeouts. Five, four, three. Barring a defensive penalty, this will be the final play. And it's and incomplete. It's Final play, 26 to eight. Minnesota Machine lead over the Wisconsin Wolves here at Einer Anderson Stadium. It is now a halftime. 26 to eight. Tall task for Wisconsin to clinch a playoff spot, but anything is possible in the sport of football. We'll take a break. We'll show you a clip from the web series, Them, featuring Carmen Richardson, number 40. Then we'll come back to start the second half. And Mike, I will be out there shooting some still photography for the third quarter. I will rejoin you for the fourth quarter. Enjoy the game. Uh, no matter what you think about me, huh? I'm just going to use all that energy for motivation. You feel me? Uh. I've got my feet on the ground and I can be moved. Nobody's keeping Been up for 36 hours straight? Yeah, I can't get no sleep. I mean, you got a problem with her being white? No, nope, but it seemed like you do. Train. No, 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 don't shush her. I want to hear what she got to say. Yo. So you knew her before I met her? Nah, I met at this party with Robbie. She was with this chick named Styles. I know Styles. She drive that black expedition, right? 
Yep, that's her. I used to fight all the time. They used to fight all the time? That's probably why she like that now. Oh, no matter what you think about me, huh? I'm just gonna use all that energy motivation. for motivation. You feel me? Oh. I got my feet on Gotta get lower. They're, seriously. When that ball snaps, you guys are already here. And how come my linebackers step up and make tackles when they gotta when 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 they're blowing you back three yards of my linebackers, how can they go in pursuit? You understand know what I mean? How can they how can they pursue anybody? Pick a gap at tight end. When I'm at tight end, I know right away she's kicking my ass. I'm getting bent backwards. So I just I like, stay low. You stay low. Right in her butt. She, I mean I'm still struggling a little bit, but it made a difference. For now on, when I when you line up in the gap and I want you to when I when I want you to a bear crawl. I actually don't want you to bear crawl. I, I kind of do, but right when the ball snaps and you stay here, that doesn't work. You need to put yourself forward. Dom has got at the 46 yard line, front line. You got to be at the 46. You're going to be yelling. So you're going to be right there. You're going to be 10 yards from right there. Be on the front line. Watch the onside. Get down and ready. Talk them out of it. Onside. Watch the onside. Watch the onside. Okay. We're gonna return the ball to our sideline. Somebody, Swana, where you at? Let, let them, tell them to hit like you hit that one girl. She was running away from you. You don't have to have her hit her again. She's not gonna run away. That's what I want. I want intimidation. Knock her uh, out. And we welcome you back to Einer Anderson Stadium as TSB Television continues its coverage of WFA football. It's the Wisconsin Wolves and the Minnesota Machine in a battle for the Upper Midwest Division Championship and a playoff spot. And the rain, it looks like it's on its way in the clear. It's heading out east. The sun is peeking out a little bit. And I don't think we'll have any more showers for the remainder of this evening, which is good. The score is 26 to eight in favor of Minnesota and how they got there. Minnesota on fire offensively. Things started when Daniel Thompson had a 10 yard touchdown pass to Becky Bowman after filling in for Mandy Merriman who took an injury to her knee. And I don't see her on the sidelines yet and perhaps uh, we'll get an update for you in the fourth when Jeff returns. Then Bowman and Thompson hooked up again for a 20 yard touchdown pass. And then Yolanda Cersei has taken over on the run with a six yard touchdown carry. And Daniel Thompson putting a little exclamation point on her brilliant first half with a two yard touchdown run. Also two of two on point afters. Wisconsin got on the board with an Aubrey Wesley five yard touchdown run and then she scooped in a reception for a two point conversion. But right now the score is 26 to eight. We'll reset the playoff picture for you after this play as Katrina Stewart fields the kick. Heads to the 40, has a big hole, goes to the 50 and is wrapped up by Wesley. Overall record irrelevant in this playoff race. It's divisional record. And so Wisconsin would have to win and do so by 22 points or more to secure the upper Midwest division title and playoff spot with the Kansas City Tribe next week. Playoff scenario, as I mentioned, rings bells with the 1991 NASCAR season when they first implemented pit road rules. And, and how that worked is you had cars that could pit on alternate laps. It, it was a very convoluted system. And then they went to the speed limit. We have a flag on the play. It could be illegal motion as Cersei with the carry. Hannah Chi still on the bench. Nice job, GT. Way to hike it. There you go. Good job. Accept it. It appears it's on Iowa, and it is. Or Wisconsin. <laughs> Sorry, we had the game with Iowa last week and uh, still creeping in our memory banks a little bit. Penalty was on Wisconsin, five yard variety. That will make it first and five for the machine as they line up in the eye again. Wisconsin running a very tight formation on both sides of the ball. They like to stuff the box on offense and on, de on defense and on offense they tighten up too with their double wing formation. Cersei with the carry gains about a yard. Sorry. With the tackle, Candy Andrikowicz, 5'8", 170, 170 pound defensive end from Sussex, went to MATC. Hey, 
Minnesota in control, of course. They want to win this outright after a disappointing loss to Iowa. Interesting stat about the machine. They have yet to lose to a Wisconsin team in the WFA. They swept the Dragon, or yes, they did, swept the Dragons earlier this season. And they're looking to do the same with the Wolves. Divisional foes, of course. Searcy with another carry gets to the 35-yard line. That will be good enough for a first down. Four-yard gain. And no matter how this season ends for the machine, if they can hang on and win, and I don't know how they'll do in the playoffs, it's just another message about the mantra of fighting through adversity. Dealt with a lot of injuries this season. They have gone through three quarterbacks now. They lost Nicole Feets at the start of the season. Mandy Merriman got hurt. Hasn't returned since as she's standing on the sideline. And now Danielle Thompson with a brilliant performance so far. And she throws an incompletion. It will be second and 10. Thompson sticking with this team from the beginning in their first season back in 2009. She gets the play from the offensive coordinator on Minnesota. That's Michael Vinson. Vinson, that's a, somewhat of a resemblance to Willie Howard from a distance, so it can be hard to tell the two apart, but from here, uh, Willie has no cap on. Minnesota favoring the eye. Cersei again, turning the corner. Has daylight, goodbye! See you later! Touchdown, Minnesota! 35-yard touchdown run by Yolanda Searcy, and persistence has paid off for the running back. We talked about it in the first half. She struggled to find holes and rhythm at the beginning of the season, and here she is, smooth, in shape, and lighting up the running game now for the machine. A brilliant way to start the second half for Minnesota. And it appears they will have the upper Midwest division title locked up. Daniel Thompson, three for three on point afters. 33 to eight the score, Minnesota over the Wisconsin Wolves. We mentioned in the first half, Lisa Olson sent the team an email last night and she got about 20 responses from teammates. And the email, I was not involved. I don't know what the exact speech was, but it was essentially the motivational coach speech to get her team pumped up and ready to play. Long story short, she said, what are you here for? After that disappointing loss to Iowa, they've come in focused and ready to play, and they are putting the taillights on the Wisconsin Wolves. <laughs> in a border rivalry that Minnesota has dominated this season. But things are not over. We've seen some crazy things happen. Wisconsin, though looking at a tall task to score enough points to win the divisional title on that tiebreaker as Daniel Thompson's kick goes out of bounds, much to Willie Howard's chagrin, but Minnesota won't lose a whole lot of yards Says it went out of bounds at the 34, so essentially a six yard penalty. But we've seen Thompson go with more short kicks in the second half of the season. And it's not so much a concern of the return unit, I think as it is a vote of confidence in the Minnesota defense. And they have come up big today, just allowing one touchdown. Things were looking interesting and when Wisconsin scored on Aubrey Wesley's five yard touchdown run and subsequent two point conversion and since then, it's been all Minnesota, 21 points unanswered. Minnesota stuffs the box again. Bring the blitz. Miller in trouble and she has to throw it away. Jessica Patnode with the pressure. Patnode had a big game against the Nebraska Stampede and a six nothing victory for Minnesota. We mentioned before the season or before this game, Christy Miller, 25 of 67 on the season. 388 yards and four touchdowns. 
Wesley her favorite target on the ground and in the air. Second and 10 with 12.37 to play in quarter number three. Carey can't quite get the number. It appears to be Adrian's. And she is tackled by Walruff. No, it was number 28, or 22, Leela Big John, the fullback. And no matter what happens, I think for the entire league and certainly the fan base in the Badger State, it's nice to see two Wisconsin teams enter the WFA in a state with very rich football tradition. You have the Green Bay Packers who have won four Super Bowl titles and are the winningest program in the NFL if you count the pre-Super Bowl days. Miller drops back under pressure, gets rid of it in time. It's complete to Wesley. She can't break Abby Smith for a touchdown reception, but she does get a first down catch at the 43. 15 yard pass. And the Wolves needed that badly. And that's something for the Wolves to build on for the next season. I imagine they'll return in the WFA. They have a couple playmakers. If they can get a couple more, you know, build that support, get that exposure, let people know, hey, you can come out and play football even if you're not a man. And I imagine they will be a much stronger team down the road. They tried to draw Minnesota offsides. Did not do that. Wesley on the carry. And she fumbles the ball. Jessica Patno with the recovery. Patno comes up big again, and there she goes. Trying to juke the refs, but she was down a while ago. The officials had signaled the first down. Aubrey Wesley taking that hard as she coughed up the ball, and coming in to help her chill out. Peggy Johnson, a 188-pound lineman from De Pere, Wisconsin, attended the University of Wisconsin Green Bay, whose basketball facility is across the street from Lambeau Field. I'm talking about the Rush Center, where the men's team plays. the only UW Green Bay alum on the roster. First down for Minnesota at the 38. They line up in the eye. Thompson, canning off to Tolley, and Tolley pushes forward. We have a flag late. As Tolley moved the ball to the 44-yard line, so it will be a six-yard game pending the flag. and it appears the penalty will be on Wisconsin. Face mask, a 15 yard penalty. And that's why the flag came in late. Just like the NFL, a face mask penalty, 15 yards regardless of intent, so that moves the ball to the Wisconsin 41. as the skies are clearing here at Einar Anderson Stadium. Thompson to Cersei again. Cersei trying to break through one more time. Can't do it, but another solid gain. Five yards, or six yards as she's tackled at the 34-yard line, so a seven-yard gain. And Cersei will sit this play out. But she deserves a rest for the brilliant performance she has put on since taking over at the primary running back slot. Standard eye again, they hand to Tully and Tully pushes forward at the 30 for a first down, a four yard gain. Minnesota's strength, of course, has been the running game for the last couple of years. They had a great running back in Lisa Bastian who left before the season began this year 
for the machine. And so this year it's been running back up by committee. We mentioned Sarah Wolf looked like she could have been their primary running back, but she tore her ACL in the second week of the season. They tried a mixture of running backs at that slot, and now Cersei and Hannah Cheese today have proven their medal behind the quarterback as we have a handoff with a new member of the machine, number 20. She was wrapped up quickly. That is Lacey Roberts, who left the team last season to serve a deployment in Iraq. And of course, she returned safe and sound, so always a nice thing to see. We have another player down for Wisconsin. Nicole Schroeder, the 190 pound, 5'10", defensive back. That stops the clock with 8.54. And so we want to remind you one more time, the sportsbrain1.blogspot.com is where you can go to get a DVD copy of this game and all our games from the 2011 Minnesota Machine season. We will, of course, have our highlight film, which is yet to be titled as the season is not over, later this fall. And you can also visit that site for TSB Television and TSB Sports to learn how you can get a copy of that highlight film. It's going to blow you away. Whatever you saw last year, this year's highlight film will be 10 times better. I can assure you that. Second and 10. No gain on the carry from Roberts. Thompson looking to throw, and it's incomplete. Flynn bobbled it, couldn't haul it in. Third down and 10 for the machine as they are in control with 8.40 left. Now, if Minnesota hangs on and wins, of course, they get the Kansas City Tribe, a tough team by any standards. The Tribe rolled over their Midwest Division opponents, and their only loss of the season was against the Chicago Force, who manhandled the machine to a shutout loss in the first week of the season. Cersei with the carry, looking to cut left. Now cuts back inside, still pushing, and she's going to be stopped at the 24-yard line, a gain of six. That will not be enough for a first down, and we have another Wisconsin player down. A lot of injuries plaguing the Wolves today. Eight nineteen remaining. And you have to give credit for the fans in attendance today on both sides who braved the midday rain in a scene that closely resembled last year's regular season home finale for Minnesota when they hosted the Iowa Thunder at Griffin Stadium. There was a persistent rain, it was showers, and it was a mist. And then finally cleared by the second half, and we have a similar scenario here in a rather wet and steamy weekend. June, of course, the wettest month on average. But if the machine hang on, it would certainly be a symbol of their growth as a team. Of course, we talked about this earlier this season, their roster expanding significantly from 2010 to 2011. Their roster almost doubled in size, which allowed them to use less two-way starters, preserve energy at positions. You don't have players putting their legs out for every snap, every play, and you certainly hope that will be the case for the Wisconsin Wolves, for the Wisconsin Dragons, and other teams the Minnesota Machine face. Because as the players increase, as the support increases, the quality of play will increase. And that means a better brand of football. And Wisconsin is no slouch. These Wolves shut out the Dragons to set themselves up for a playoff fight, 66 to nothing. And the player down for the Wolves is Leah Razik of Stevens Point went to Mid-State Technical College. Perhaps, or it looks like 53, but will might be 83. It's 63, Candy Andrikovitz from Sussex. Oh, 
One thing this game has uh, proven to me today is the usefulness of a spotter. We'd like to thank our Wisconsin Wolves game film cameraman for helping us spot those players and allowing us to report on your team accurately. Of course, with the WFA, we want to make sure we provide the most professional broadcast for all the teams. Thompson with her first completion to Cersei, and Cersei will not convert. She was well short of the first down, a three-yard loss. But I suppose Thompson figured, hey, I've pitched you to so many times, why not throw to you? Again, the machine in control here. And so Wisconsin takes over with 8.02 left in the third as the sun now breaking out a beautiful sunset. A rather fitting way to end our period of sunlight. Of course, we still have a quarter and a half left. Wisconsin, of course, has to score 26 points to win the game, and then they have to score another 22 points to win the division title. So scoring 48 points in the span of 23 minutes is certainly a tall task, but again, we saw their medal in the, sec in the first quarter, or in the second quarter, with an Aubrey Wesley touchdown run. Which proved that if the Wolves can find some holes, they can punch through big time. Wesley has nowhere to go. Walworth brings her down. The first person to get to her was Shalonda Williams. Three yard loss on the play, second and 13 for the Wolves. Yeah, of course, Wisconsin's football history also includes their Badgers and Camp Randall Stadium, which bleeds red on every home game. And an annual rivalry game with the Minnesota Golden Gophers uh, adds to the festivities over there. Miller under pressure again and pulls off another completion. That will be close to the first down. Melissa Kuloff with the reception. They spot her at the 32-yard line, so an 11-yard gain. That makes it a very manageable third and two for the Wolves. You gotta drop. That's only Koloff's second reception of the Watch season. That wing, Michelle. She had one catch earlier this year for 15 yards. Inside of 43, Shalanda. Inside. There you go. Third and Back two. Now go. Wesley again. There you go. Looking yeah. for the first down. No gain. Gelhouse and Walruf bring her down. That was Big John on the carry. My apologies. Fourth and two. Wisconsin may go for it here. Six minutes to play in quarter number three. Watch the wing. Watch the ball, T line. Watch the ball. Yes. Yes. Another handoff. Yes. This may be enough oh. to convert. And it is. Couldn't hey. quite see the carry. But Wisconsin with a big fourth down conversion to keep their offensive possession alive. Fresh set of downs at the 35. Five minutes and counting, 4.55 now. And another fumble, a bad snap, and a pileup. But the referee signals Wisconsin ball, so there won't be any drama there. That will make it second and 10 for the Wolves. I had talked to one of the Wolves coaches before the game, and this is apparently the first time
This team has been featured on television. The coach has been featured on TV in previous Come on, defense, come on. occupations, but first TV coverage for the Wolves, and hopefully this is something if for Wolves fans, for Stampede fans, for any team, any community with a WFA team, if they're watching as Miller looking to go deep, and she does at midfield with the catch, Koloff. 15 yard gain, but she went down hard and slow to get up, so they will take an injury timeout. And Willie Howard going over to check her out. One of the big differences between WFA teams and NFL teams is the compassion, the empathy, as Willie Howard is signaling to his bench for water. You have opposing coaches and opposing players. They check each other out. They make sure they're okay. They certainly want to beat each other up on the football field, but after a play is over and after the game is over, they stay friends. They develop strong friendships. As you saw last week, Yolanda Searcy talked about the friendships she has built with the Iowa team and that rivalry. It's not a high-blooded or red-blooded rivalry that you might see in college football or the NFL. As despite their geographical differences, they all share the same thing, and that's a passion and desire to play the sport that men have popularized for years upon years upon decades, if you go back to the NFL in its infancy in the 1920s and the 1930s. 3.55 left in the third quarter. As they're still taking a look at Melissa Koloff. Koloff from Amherst, Wisconsin. 5'8", 135 pound wide receiver. And now they wave the machine and the wolves off the field. They will head to the bench for now. Three fifty five left and We'd like to remind you again, the sportsframe1.blogspot.com is where you can go to get DVD copies of this game as they still are taking a look at Koloff. Couldn't quite see the hit. I know she had two machine players converge on her position after the catch. And we know football, a very physical sport. The last thing you want to see is an injury, of course, and with any sport that can happen, especially a sport as physical as football. If you follow professional broadcasts, they often talk about a 100% injury rate that all players get banged up, and it's just a matter to what extent, but it's not something you see in all levels, no matter what the sport, particularly for basketball, for football and baseball. And the Wisconsin Wolves have elected to run the clock with 3.55 left. There was talk before the game that the ga no matter what happened, they would call the game at 11 if weather was inclement to keep everyone from waiting around for too long. There was some griping. There was some discussion. There was some uh, hard feelings about the handling of the situation last year in the first round playoff game between the Minnesota Machine and the Iowa Thunder about when to call the game. And with 3.55 left in the third, the Wisconsin Wolves have essentially conceded the game 
and the playoff and the division title to the Minnesota machine. And with the rate of injuries they've suffered in this quarter, it's not a surprising move. They think they want to get this game over with and don't need to overexert and risk a needless injury that could seriously affect a player who signed for the team simply to play the sport of football and enjoy it and live the dreams and the glory and get a taste of what it's like for folks like Aaron Rodgers and Donald Driver and Adrian Peterson, Devin Hester, Matt Stafford, just to name a few. Koloff walking off the field slowly, so we will have a running clock to end the game, and I am not surprised at that decision. Again, with 3.55 left, Minnesota up 33-8. to eight. It's clear Wisconsin would not score enough points to take home the Upper Midwest Division Championship, let alone the game itself, given how it's progressed. So we will now have a running clock. Let's go, D. Effectively, this is the WFA mercy rule going into effect. Again, the Wisconsin Wolves requested it. And given everything that's happened, it's an understandable decision. While certainly both teams are coming out here and we're focused on the victory before the game, they don't want to do anything needless and lead to a serious injury that wasn't necessary. The health of the players comes first. Christy Miller to throw. And another completion to Aubrey Wesley. And she gets to the 40-yard line. Good enough for another Wisconsin first down. Again, the clock will continue no matter what happens. Incomplete pass or any other stoppage of play will not be factored in now. So we will be out of here rather shortly. Let's go, Charlie! Although you have to give credit to the Wisconsin offense and the Wolves for not folding and not just running some generic uh, play here. And Aubrey Wesley with another carry to the 35, a five yard gain. They're not giving up and throwing in the towel and just running a few plays uh, for the heck of it. They're still fighting, looking for ways to score because they know for all these players, the season may end tonight, but the 2012 season starts the next day. As they'll look to recruit, they'll look, they'll go back and look at the game film. I'm sure they will, the coaching staff and the players will evaluate the film, the games, and find out where can we make improvements. And I'm sure they'll also take this off season to look at expanding. How can we get a bigger roster? 14. Where can we go? How do we get more fan support? How do we increase the support we already have? And you have to give credit to the Wolves fans in attendance who brought signs here. I know they had high hopes with a playoff implication at stake coming into this game. Rodgers with the tackle, short gain for Wisconsin. It's third and five. And Minnesota will be looking to do the same. They expanded their roster considerably, but one area they'm sure they'd like to improve is getting more fans to come out here and support the machine. Now the weather did not help today. With the rain earlier, it was heavy. There was some talk about possible severe weather tonight. That doesn't look like it's the case. It appears the front has moved on. We just have some hazy, foggy skies here at Honor Anderson Stadium. Miller with another pass and another completion to Wesley. That's good for another first down at the 25. A 10 yard gain by Wesley as we approach the final minute of quarter number three. And that's one element I imagine Wisconsin will build on for next season. That chemistry of Miller and Wesley. How do you develop that tandem and get players around her to make Wesley even more deadly? As all it takes is 
You never know, one person here, one addition can mean the difference between a decent attack and an outstanding attack. This will be the last play of the third. Carry to the 20 yard line. Couldn't quite read the number, but it's a five yard gain. And that will be the last play of quarter number three as Minnesota will clinch a postseason berth and the upper Midwest division title here with Wisconsin electing to run the clock. We're at the end of quarter number three, Minnesota up 33 to eight. And that pre-game speech, Lisa Olson emailed to her players last night appears to be paying dividends here. The runner on Wisconsin's last play was number 58, Sonia Marsh of Antigua, Wisconsin. Went to West Bend High School, 5'3", 173 pound defensive back. So any West Bend High School alumni, if you're watching, we thank you for tuning in and supporting Marsh and the rest of the Wisconsin Wolves. Well, if the Wisconsin Wolves stick around in this division, and my guess is they will given its proximity to Minnesota, I have to make sure we have our spotter <laughs> pointing out players for us. He's been a great help today, shooting game film and spotting to make sure we can provide you the correct names and carriers and playmakers for the Wisconsin Wolves. They certainly have a lot. It's uh, going to be first and 10 from the 20 and a half yard line as we start the final quarter again. Wisconsin electing to go with the running clock. So we will roll as soon as the ball is snapped, regardless of the situation. And for Minnesota, this will be a 15-minute victory cruise. Jeff Williams, of course, will be joining me shortly. Another carry and another push. And I imagine with the outcome decided... We won't see too many crazy plays here. They'll keep things relatively simple. But again, Wisconsin would like to get one more touchdown and improve on their point total from their last visit with the machine when they lost 27-6. to But again, a first-year team in the WFA, and we've seen other teams come in after the first year as Willie Howard running over and across at the 40-yard line. That's not something you'll see in the NFL, of course, but uh, here in the WFA, they're not quite as stingy with process and procedure. Wisconsin with the first down conversion on third and one. 14.05 left. And to go off that conversation, Wisconsin, if they look at the likes of the Nebraska Stampede, who played last year without a single win. They picked up two this year, but they have been playing better and better against their regular opponents, including the Minnesota Machine. While they have beaten Nebraska the last four times, each game gets closer and closer. That included a 13-12 fight last season in their final game of the 2010 campaign and that series, and a 6-0 victory. We have flags. This will likely be a face mask on Wesley. And it is, so an automatic first down for Wisconsin. 13-13 left in the fourth. And so if Wisconsin, perhaps if they watch the Minnesota Machine game with Nebraska, or if they follow the leagues, they'll see that teams that hang around the WFA, even in its second year, start to show improvements. And the Wisconsin Wolves already have a great platform to improve on for 2012. They will finish the year at 4-4. Four four. A 500 record for the first year in the WFA is nothing to sneeze at. It will be first and goal for the Wolves following the face mask penalty. Another carry. And both teams going a little more conservative now with the outcome decided. Three yard, two yard gain on the play, second and goal from the five. And another injury on the field, that does stop the clock. 
with the mercy rule scenario, of course, they do stop the clock for injury timeouts. That's not something the machine wanted to see, though. They've already lost Mandy Merriman, and uh, the fact that she hasn't taken the field since her injury would suggest she will not be available for their playoff victory or their playoff game against the Kansas City Tribe. We have 12-11 left in the fourth quarter, and Jeff Williams is joining me in the booth once more, and I will have to say this, it's the first time I've seen a team elect to use a running clock. Yeah, that is a unique situation, but I'll tell you this. On the sideline, the uh, word from the Wisconsin Wolves uh, bench, so they were unanimously kind of yelling, I've never seen women hit like that before. So I think they came in and underestimated the uh, physical nature of the Minnesota machine. We're still looking to get a number on the machine player down. And with the outcome of this game decided, Minnesota will win the division and will get a playoff game with the Kansas City Tribe. What do they look on to build on for that playoff game because the Tribe dominated their opponents in the Midwest Division, only losing to the Chicago Force, who blanked the machine in the first game of the season? Well, that was the first game of the season, though. Uh, I, there's been a lot of football played since then. I think what will happen is that the, uh, well, first of all, who's coming off the field, Mike? Nina Cocharella, whose nickname is Nico. I can't tell you where she's from because that's not listed on our game day roster, but uh, she's being carried off the field, and she is one of the starting linemen. So Minnesota may have to make a couple adjustments before this playoff game with the Kansas City Tribe, who have had two weeks off. Their season ended a couple weeks ago, so they have two bye weeks, and Minnesota will have to come in next week to play the Tribe on the first round of the playoffs. Well, if they actually have, if they actually have film of that game, then I'm sure that Coach Howard and his staff will be picking that apart, looking for uh, what it is that the tribe does right, what it is that they, where they make mistakes, and and how his team can mentally prepare to execute their game plan next week. I will also say that uh, Hannah Cheese got an update on her that she has a uh, pulled quadricep and will not return. I believe it's a pulled right quad. Eleven fifteen left. Thirty-three to eight, Minnesota lead. It's third and goal from the four. Miller with another play action, and oh. a touchdown pass dropped. And Miller was just stomping after that play because that should have been a touchdown. Her target was number 81, Jennifer Nix of Warrensburg, New York, the only listed Wolves player not from Wisconsin. But you're right, a sure touchdown dropped and uh, an unfortunate uh, insult to injury, metaphorically speaking, for Wisconsin's day. But we were talking in the third quarter, or I was talking to the fans out there. I'm sure Wisconsin will enjoy their first year than WFA as they will finish with a 500 record. That's nothing to sneeze at in your first year. Wesley with the carry. She will not get to the goal line, so Minnesota will take over on downs. Again, the clock continues to roll, even though we have a change of possessions, and I imagine Minnesota will play conservative here. Willie Howard and his staff are going to do everything they can to protect this lead. Uh, they're they're going to probably bring out the running game, just keep the clock moving. That's all they need to do. They know that it's going to be very, very tough for Wisconsin to get back in this game, and already I think the players and the coaching staff know that they have just pretty much solidified their spot for the playoffs. I'm not white. Wisconsin, I'm not white. on the other hand, they're white. still going to keep up their sense of urgency, but their their players are, are really hurting tonight. You know, Some of them come out and then on injury and then they come back into the game thankfully it doesn't look to be too many severe injuries although um, you know any, any injury can be severe but uh, this team looks like they're just tired looks like they feel like they've been overmatched and basically been beaten down um, they got a lot of work to put into it for in the offseason 
They're going to have some needs to address. But I think in the next season or two, they're going to do all right. They're definitely going to be a team to watch out for. Well, I was talking uh, while you were taking pictures and how Nebraska has improved over the years. They were getting blanked by opponents like Minnesota in their first year of existence. And this year, they came up here once, and they played a well-fought game, held Minnesota to six points. And even though it was 6 nothing, the offense needs some work. They're getting better. Wisconsin, they're 4-4. Four and four. So they have a lot to build on. I imagine they'll get better as more people know about the Wolves and they un now they get a sense of the WFA competition. So uh, Minnesota, it's not going to be smooth sailing for them next year to win this division title but as that, it was but, this year. But that's not to say right. that Minnesota can't improve. I think this coaching staff has identified numerous areas where they can improve, and it's a matter of finding the players and developing the players to fill those spots. Swan McLeod now getting some carries for the machine. And that's one area of improvement I mentioned in the third quarter, Minnesota's expanded roster. They have more players that they can practice at different positions, test the waters out, and they don't have to use as many two-way starters. And I imagine with Willie Howard and his enthusiasm and his marketing, Things can only look up for the machine. Well, that was one of the first things that happened after the interim tag was removed from Willie Howard after last year's playoff games. game was, um, as we see a pitch out. To McLeod, and McLeod runs to the 19-yard line for a six-yard game. They made a big recruiting drive in the offseason. Uh, Howard was not happy with the limited number of players that they had. He figured that he felt at that time that they really needed to expand that lineup in order to have the depth necessary to overcome all contingencies and make a deep push into the playoffs. And that strategy seems to have paid off. If you look at the Wisconsin bench versus the Minnesota bench, two or three to one difference. And I think Wisconsin, for them to improve, they're going to have to go on a recruiting binge, get more players in, and develop them just like Minnesota has. Another handoff, short gain. And then Wisconsin's also going to have to go deep. They're going to have to find a lot of bodies because that's what it takes in this league, especially with the number of injuries that you have in the WFA. It seems like every game we've got the teams taking knees repeatedly, especially in the second half like this where it's injury after injury after injury. Some of that may be conditioning. Some of that just may be the unfortunate nature of football. Some of it is also hydration issues. You know, when you get into physical matchups like this, there are a lot of, it, it puts a lot of strain and toll on your body. And I don't think a lot of these players are used to that. And when I talked about this in the NFL broadcast, a lot of announcers mentioned football has a 100% injury rate. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but it highlights that it's a very physical sport and you can get banged up quite easily because of, you never know when you'll hit have some freak hit or tackle or movement. Or a clothesline uh, tackle. It's a bang bang sport and strange things can happen. A lot like auto racing. <laughs> Did you get him? There's I think been so. a fly bothering Mike since the uh, third quarter. It's, I think it was there it wanting is. to be on Go away. a yes. broadcaster get out of there. In, in place of me in the third quarter. Came up and bothered Mike, and then he Only just if left. it's a loon. The loon is a state bird, not the mosquito. Well, <laughs> it's debatable. Well, it... I think the state legislature recognizes the loon as a state bird, unless, uh, did you, they pass that? You, have you ever heard of a loon control district? <laughs> there was a fumble on that snap from Thompson, and uh, it looks like Minnesota fell on it. That will bring up fourth down. Again, that point somewhat moot. And to point out what you said about Willie Howard, I attended the team dinner last year to showcase the highlight reel. And that was something right away he said he, his goal was to get enough players to go too deep at every position. And I'd say he has taken a great step at going there. They're going to punt on fourth down here. And I can only imagine the roster will get bigger and deeper next year with Willie Howard at the helm. Especially when the team has success. Success is always a good measure for recruiting because if you're successful, other people want to back a winner and they want to be part of that team. Not to mention they have uh, television coverage, which I mentioned, perhaps Wolves fans and other teams that have followed machine games this year, they see this and they say, you know what, we can go out and cover this team as well. Absolutely. 
And you're talking about winning Minnesota will now win division titles in back-to-back -back years despite winning it in different divisions. Last year it was the Midwest, this year it's the Upper Midwest, but still it's back-to-back. -back. And that's what it takes, just one, one season at a time, one game at a time, and you can get one division title at a time. And this also puts Minnesota at 4-0 against Wisconsin teams. That's not something the Vikings or the Gophers can say. So if you really get into that border rivalry, Jeff and I don't, of course, as we're fans of football, uh, that's one point of marketing you could use as Miller under pressure, complete to 81 at the 45-yard line. Once again, that's Jennifer Nix from Warrensburg, New York. Attended college at University of Wisconsin-Pittsburgh. That's what's listed on the game day roster. I haven't heard of a UW-Pittsburgh. Probably UW-Plattsburgh. Platteville. UW-Platteville. Yes. What's your name, by the way? Scooter. We, we have Scooter to give Scooter credit for helping us with the Wolves throughout the game, helping spot for us. I want to make sure we get him credit. Absolutely, and I'm glad Scooter's up here uh, filming this for the Wolves. Wesley with the carry. There's a flag on the play, but the clock will not stop. Down to three minutes and 30 seconds set. 33.30 left in regulation. Holding on Wisconsin, that will push them back 10 yards. So as we approach the closing minutes, why don't you share perhaps your favorite memory of the 2011 season as this will be the final home game for the machine? Oh, there's so many of them. <laughs> Where do I start? Um, favorite memory, I have to say, would just be the way, uh, probably the ending of last week's game is actually my favorite memory. Even though the machine came up short, the fact is it was a very thrilling game that you haven't always seen in WFA contests, where both teams were evenly matched, both teams were fighting on the win. Uh, that's where you kind of almost hope for a tie. <laughs> Wesley to the 40, third down and about seven on a five-yard game. Now here's the one question, if we have a running clock, will they ignore the two-minute warning? Probably not. Well, we're at 2.22. Scooter says they will. We'll find out in 20 seconds. Jeff says no, Scooter says yes, or no, Jeff sa Scooter says no, Jeff says yes. No, we'll the, no? They, 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 we will stop for or, a two-minute warning. Yeah, I'm Scooter getting my yeses no. and noes. Yes, you are. That's not the first time I've mixed myself up. Okay, well, it's still counting. Scooter win. Uh, they stopped no. it at 159. They're allowing the play to continue. Wesley again. Okay, so we had a two-second, two-minute <laughs> warning. Congratulations, Scooter, you're correct. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe... Well, this is a stretch. Uh, or wait, did they hear us and they said, you know what, we'll pull a Chuck Woolery on you. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> two and two. This isn't love connection, though, but I'm sure there will be a big connection the machine can use. And I'd have to say that last game with Iowa was certainly my favorite memory of the 2011 season. And it was, to me, a microcosm of what the WFA is shooting to be. Absolutely. And Mike, after this play, I got a question for you. Miller completes to Wesley at the 34-yard line. Where can somebody go to watch last week's game since that's been our big <laughs> highlight? Uh, it's online now. Where can they find it online? Right now it's on my YouTube page at youtube.com slash sportsbrain09. I will embed and post a link on the Sportsbrain site, TSB Television. But you can go and... If you search Minnesota Machine or if you visit youtube.com slash sportsbrain09, you can find that game. You can find our broadcast with a stampede, and you will find this game as well if you're watching on television. As the fans... The fans know that the machine have it in the bag. We're winding down to 30 seconds remaining in regulation. And Carmen Richardson with the tackle. The actress bringing in... Edelbeck, and that will likely be the last play of the game, and now we're just counting it down to 15 seconds. Will there be a Gatorade bath? 
Uh, I don't see it. Don't see anybody getting ready for it. <laughs> but a division title nonetheless for Minnesota. Their second straight division crown and their second straight qualification for the and playoffs. And that is the end of regulation. The Minnesota Machine have defeated the Wisconsin Wolves 33-8 to at Einer Anderson Stadium. And the Minnesota Machine will advance off to the playoffs. The Wisconsin Wolves, however, will have a lot of film to take a look at, and they will be competitive next year. And as I said in the third quarter, next season starts tomorrow for these Wisconsin Wolves, and I imagine They'll spend a lot of time getting some recruiting in. If they take anything from Minnesota's model, I'd say Wisconsin will have a bigger roster next year, and this border rivalry will just get better for 2012. Now the biggest unknowns are what are the Wisconsin Dragons going to do in that mix next year? What are the Nebraska Stampede going to do in that mix next year? And even though they're not in the same division anymore, what is the Iowa Explosion going to do? As a lot of those teams still play against each other, even though the division splits with the expansion. A lot of questions we'll have to answer for you next spring. Minnesota wins 33 to eight. I will head down to the field to get a word with our players of the game and wrap up our coverage of the Minnesota Whoa, Machine 2011 regular season. Mike, it was great broadcasting with you this season. Mike. Yes, we need to do this again. And take care of Rockford for me. Uh, I will, no J turns. <laughs> watching you ladies play, this is how football is supposed to be played, with heart, dedication, determination. This is why we come out and watch you guys and coach in the first place. So I want to take my hats off to you all, the Wolves, for a great season and a great hard work for you all. Any other coaches got anything to say? We're good, so, all right, here we go. Whose father? The one in the head. I will be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy kingdom, power, and glory forever. Mike Beaton here with our players of the game from Minnesota, Yolanda Searcy and Danielle Thompson. Danielle, what a performance from you having to sub for Mandy Merriman. Explain your versatility. Well, uh, we already had another quarterback go down uh, after Feets went down. Mandy stepped up, and it was Mandy's team from there. We all believed in her. We were all behind her. Uh, when she goes down, someone else just has to step up. Uh, the coaches asked me to, to come in at quarterback, and our offensive line did an awesome job. I, I wasn't touched at all today, and it, it's all, all uh, kudos to them. What kind of redemption is this for you? You had a 40-yard field goal miss last week against Iowa that could have clinched it then. You had a thrilling performance tonight that did clinch the division in a playoff spot. This was a great team win. It takes a whole team to, to get a victory like this, and uh, it, it just feels good to uh, finally get into the playoffs now. Now you have a date with the Kansas City Tribe. It's a tough opponent, but uh, what will you take and what will you prepare for as you begin the playoffs next week for the second straight time? Sure. They've had a couple of bye weeks, so they've, uh, they might be a, a little... Uh, not, not quite ready for us yet. I don't think they, they are going to be ready for us. I think we're a new team now. Uh, we're, we're ready to go. We're ready to take them on, and uh, they'll, they'll just have to be ready for us. And your third season with the machine, just where will this season go in your time with the machine? I know you still have a playoff game, but once again, you fight through adversity and win a division title. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been great. This is uh, uh, two division titles in a row um, out of the three years that we've, we've been around. And uh, we just keep building on successes from uh, years past, and let's just keep keep going and building on that. Yolanda, you get better and better every week. You had a 35-yard touchdown run tonight. And week two against Nebraska, or the second game, you struggled to find holes. Now it's smooth sailing for you. You know, it's just our line. Our line's blocking awesome. And I'm just, I'm, 
throughout the season, I've learned to trust those line and trust those blockers and to follow through with them. Early in the year, I wasn't trusting them. I was trying to make my own holes, and as they progressed and came as a team as one, they started blocking together, and I just started hitting the holes that they were making for us. And how would you describe the chemistry and this, this season in general? Minnesota's roster expanded greatly. You had Willie Howard, first-year head coach, and now you brought him his first division title as a women's professional football head coach. Uh, no, our chemistry is great, I believe. You know, we, um, we're used to having our 18, 19-man teams, and we work as a team, you know, sister love. But when you get, what, 48, 50 in a team, and we all come together, bond together, communicate, no fighting, no bickering, it's easier. It's easier to win. It's easier to play. It's easier for a coach to coach us. So it's, it's, chemistry is great. How sweet is this win after a disappointing loss to Iowa last week? Um, this, is a <laughs> this is like topping on the ice cream. This is excellent. <laughs> <laughs> and and no, and where do you go from here? Obviously, you have a playoff game, but next year I'm sure you'll be back. Uh, where do you look to improve on the running game to expand the threats you've provided this year? Uh, we're going to take it up another notch. You know, we got some good girls that came in midway, strong girls. But, uh, we get them in, we get them to the rotation, we get them in knowing the plays, get them hitting hard hole, you know, getting low and running through. We're going to be powerful. Our backfield is going to be stronger than ever next year. And then for both of you. Uh, What's going to be the goal for next year to get the machine name out there and make this team bigger and better than 2011? Well, the division championships definitely help when you're winning. It's much easier to uh, uh, get the word out. Um, we just want to make sure that our fans, uh, whenever they're coming to the game, keep talking about us and uh, keep telling people to join us and come watch us and support us. Yeah, more so um, we're going to start out getting and recruiting off season. So starting Monday, start, well, start tomorrow, we're just going to get out in the community more. We're just going to start more. Off season, we're going to be out in the community. We're going to be helping out. We're going to be doing all kinds of fundraising and stuff to get us to get our name out there. Well, a lot of community drive last year. I'm sure that will improve this year. Anyone you want to say hi to that might be watching? Sure, I'll say hi to my parents. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. And happy Father's Day. Exactly. Hi, family. Hi, Mom, Dad. Hi, sister, brother. And happy Father's Day to all your fathers out there. Happy Father's Day from us as well. Yolanda Searcy and Danielle Thompson are players of the game from the 2011 Upper Midwest Division champion, Minnesota Machine. Mike Peden here with the Wisconsin Wolves player of the game, Aubrey Wesley, who just got out of a big post-game pep talk. Aubrey, how does it feel not to be a rookie anymore? Oh, it's amazing to watch from game number one to game number eight. It's amazing how we've all developed, we've come together as a family. This is truly a wolf pack. Uh, not the ending you wanted, I imagine, but how would you describe your first season in the WFA? You finished 4-4, four and four, 500 mark. That was our goal. We didn't want to finish less than 500. So according to what this goal, the team's goals, we surpassed them. And what did Minnesota bring that you'll be able to use to improve for next season? Minnesota came out very physical tonight. Very physical. <laughs> we have a couple girls in the hospital. Um, <laughs> oh, no. are, that, they, are that they okay? Was, We'll find out. I plan on heading right there. But that was the game right there. They came out hard. They came out hard hitting. And they wanted it. They definitely studied our plays. So hats off to Minnesota. They played one great game. And what does it mean for you to put on these pads and play the game that you've grown to see so many folks in Green Bay where they've won four Super Bowls and at University of Wisconsin with the Badgers? What does it mean to play the same sport they do? I'm very, very lucky. All of us ladies realize that that some of us had dreams of actually playing real football rather than tackle football or rather than tag football and to have this opportunity we all know that we are very very lucky and what do you establish for next season because uh, there was a couple playmakers uh, Miller had a nice performance and you had a big break for a touchdown to make things interesting in the second so a lot of uh, pieces in place to build the foundation for the Wolves Yes, actually every single player is very important to this team. And if we can get the majority of them to come back next year, we will put up a strong fight. We will come back harder. And what does it mean to have you met a professional women's football team in a state with a rich history, with the Packers, with the Badgers? Well, maybe we can give the Packers a run for their own money. <laughs> well, you need about uh, 12 championships to do that first. <laughs> oh, we're working on it. <laughs> they got a little extra money in their back pocket. And so where do you look to recruit for next year to build on the Wolves roster? Because you see what's happened with Minnesota and with other teams like Nebraska. Their second year, they get more competitive than last year. Yep, that's what we worked at. We started thinking about it already. But we have ladies that come all the way from every end of the state, from up north to the west and the east side, not just central Wisconsin where we are originally located. So if we can reach out, we're going to keep reaching out. Um, we need a bigger team. We need more girls. Anything you want to say to your teammates? I love them. They became my family. Couldn't do without them. And anyone you want to say hi to that might be watching? 
to my family who didn't get to make it, and thanks for Travis for being here, and George too. Well, look out for this Wolf Pack. They will be doing big things in the years to come. Congratulations on your first season and getting rid of that rookie status. You're now a veteran. Thank you. Aubrey Wesley of the Wisconsin Wolves. That concludes our coverage of the 2011 Minnesota Machine season. We'll be having a highlight film in the fall. Check that out. Otherwise, for everyone here at TSB Television, I'm Mike Peden. We'll see you in 2012.